Kansas City Chiefs are champions of Super Bowl 54. A journey five decades in the making. We've come this far. We can't lose. From the very beginning, it was Super Bowl or bust. Relive the moments. Then comes Jet Chip Wasp. Oh, stepping up. He's throwing long downfield for Tyreek Hill. Got it at the 20-yard line. Throw right side. Caught by Williams at the right pylon. Touchdown, Kansas City. The memories. Betty Cannon started going off. Everybody's just screaming. Relive the glory. I got out there at 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if I can put it into words how insane it was. He looked at me and he just came over to me and opened up his arms and we embraced, we hugged. Relive the championship on your home of the Chiefs. 41 Action News starts now. I was at the game against Houston as a fan. And I'm, I'm sitting in the stands. Quickly, Deshaun Watson and the Texans come out. They looking pretty hot, right? They're playing well, they're playing fast, they're playing loose. The Chiefs looked a mess out there. I just never, I thought, I thought we lost it, 24 nothing. It was, I mean, void of any energy. I mean, you could have heard a pin drop in the stadium. I was destroyed. I was devastated. Who comes back from 24 nothing? No one. 7 Houston, 8.32 to go, second quarter. That's a fake punt. They fake the right side and tackle. Short of the first down. Great play. Dirty Dan Sorensen would not be fooled. Dan Sorensen, oh my gosh, that play was so cool when he read that and then made a tackle in open space like he did. Listen to that crowd as Sorensen is mirroring the guy about to do the fake punt. And then that play, that play alone is why the Chiefs possibly are Super Bowl champions. The Chiefs scored touchdowns on their last seven possessions, okay? They were gonna win that game regardless, I think. But that kind of lit the fuse um, and accelerated that process and was one of the, the biggest reasons why they were able to uh, grab the lead by halftime. That stadium, when there's a lot of momentum flowing and it gets loud, you can, you can feel the ground shaking. That ground was shaking, that game. I, make no mistake about it, it was shaking. To take the lead in one quarter, basically, or a quarter and a half, is just mind-boggling to me. And the fact that that happened and to still win by 20-plus points uh, was the, maybe the wildest switch as a sports fan I've ever felt. And in the second half, it was a party. I mean, literally for Eric Fisher, who grabbed beers, <laughs> right? Smashed them together. Um, I've never seen, I've never seen a game like that. And I would be surprised if I ever see a game like that again. Chiefs Kingdom is ready no matter where you are in the Metro. Game time a few hours away, and we are set one game away. If we matriculate the ball down the field, <laughs> we will make it to the Super Bowl to Miami. In that game when Jim Nance, Jim Nance is announcing, and there's a long bomb touchdown to Sammy Watkins, and I'll never forget Jim Nance. Sammy Watkins for the touchdown! And that was it. The Chiefs are on their way to the Super Bowl. At that point, you knew they were going to the Super Bowl. It was incredible. I'm getting chills now thinking about it. It's hard to believe. What a feeling. What a moment. Lifetime memory was getting to go to that game with my husband and we're watching and you're afraid to believe it. I mean, that was a comeback too. And I kept looking at the clock going, five more minutes, three more minutes, two more minutes, and still not letting myself really, it, it's almost like I was numb because that meant this was really gonna happen. And for us, we have to start heading out. So we're walking out to get ready so we can go on the air. Yes, you hear the murmurs, you hear the chatter every year. Oh, the Chiefs always do this. They have a great season. They get to the playoffs and they don't make it. They don't, they don't deliver. And so we're getting there. I remember being on the elevator, getting off the elevator, and I hear Arrowhead erupt and the fireworks start going off. They had scored again. And then you remember the AFC Championship the year before, how close we came to just like, we were jumping up and down, screaming in our living room a year ago. Here we are at Arrowhead, 
it is frigid and you can't even feel the cold. It doesn't matter because this is it. Like, you realize this is it and you're so afraid to let yourself believe it. Just watching that clock tick down. 18 seconds, they will count it down here at Arrowhead Stadium. The Chiefs Kingdom, hoping, hoping, hoping their dreams have come true. And so walking out, we're getting ready. And all of a sudden you hear Mitch Holtis. You hear the call. Hail, hail to the king of the Chiefs Kingdom forever. Because today, the team that Lamar Hunt founded has just won Lamar Hunt's trophy in the stadium that was Lamar Hunt's dream. Kansas City is the AFC champion. They are headed to Miami for Super Bowl 54. And when it happened, when the confetti cannons started going off, everybody's just screaming. It was so surreal. It was so emotional. We teared up. We're going to the Super Bowl. You, you realize the whole history that's behind it. 50 years since we've gone to the Super Bowl. We're, We're going, going to, to the Super, Super Bowl! Bowl. I remember feeling was this overwhelming pride for the community because as a football fan as lifelong fans here there are people who are adults who have never gotten to experience that never gotten to experience the AFC championship win never gotten to experience seeing their team play in the Super Bowl let me rewind to the AFC title game against New England a year ago uh, me and my co-anchor we were outside the stadium um, I remember hearing all the oohs and ahs the last few minutes of overtime and I literally, literally didn't realize that the game was over and that folks were being let out of the stadium because it was so quiet. When the fans were leaving Arrowhead, I looked around and I saw a few grown men crying. I mean, they were just so devastated because they were that close to going to the Super Bowl and fate just wasn't, in, 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 it just it just didn't bode well for them. They were that close and they were crying. I've never seen so many grown men cry when we lost to the Patriots in the AFC title game. When we won the AFC, I have never seen so many grown men cry. And it was tears of joy. That was special. You're going to make me cry now. That is, that is just hard to believe. You know, it's called the Lamar Hunt Trophy. It takes us 50 years to win the Lamar Hunt Trophy and go on to the Super Bowl. But that was quite a feeling. Uh, amazing to watch uh, Clark Hunt hold that up. And so when you go half a century, there's going to be more than a shred of doubt that creeps into Chiefs fans' minds. And um, I'm sure a lot of them, and maybe I was one of them, thought, okay, it's never gonna happen. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. Maybe maybe they're cursed for whatever reason. Uh, but when it did, it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty moving. I mean, I don't think you can really quantify. I don't think you can put that into words. And knowing that Lamar Hunt was so fan-focused, I think that's another thing that's so um, integral to his legacy. There are people in Kansas City who still remember Lamar coming out, waving at the fans, talking to people at the tailgates. Um, I know Clark and Norma did that during the playoff run. They really care about the kingdom. And I think for them, the people here just wanted to give that love back to the family. All the tough years, all the, uh, the bad losses, all the two and 14 seasons, all the coaches that have come in and out, all the quarterbacks that didn't work and for it all to finally come together, um, how big of a moment it was for Chiefs fans. And it was, it was, it was a huge, huge moment that was only surpassed two weeks later. That first week was so much of euphoria and let's go again. And there was almost like a, a lull a little bit that Sunday before Super Bowl week began. It almost felt like the city was, okay, we gotta conserve our energy for just a day here. We gotta, we gotta turn it off for just one day and then pick it back up tomorrow. Well, I mean, we got there more than a week before the game. <laughs> but what a moment. One of the cool things about the Super Bowl, it's a two week event where all eyes are on you. And once fans started showing up, I made the joke, I'm like, oh, I'm seeing her red and gold around here. Of course, the 49ers colors uh, as well. But it was, I mean, on the streets, kind of three to one, uh, Chiefs fans over 49ers fans, which isn't surprising whatsoever if you live in this area, whether you're a Chiefs or a Royals fan or you're a fan of Mizzou, KUK State, we travel, right? We are passionate about our teams and we put our money where our mouth is. We put, you know, the, our, our, our pocketbooks there as well. 
and, and they travel. So I met a really good group of uh, Chiefs transplants um, in Florida. They all came from the Kansas City area and ended up living in South Florida. And every single Sunday they meet at the same bar, sit at the exact same table, order the same food to watch the Chiefs game. So we met up with them at their same table, uh, talked with them, um, and it was just really cool to see how the group started with two people and grew to a couple dozen. We talked to people who made it on the tightest budget possible. Like they drove down, they stayed in a tent, they didn't care if they went to the game or not, they just wanted to be around everybody. Every single person you met had this awesome connection of why it was such a cool memory for them and why this meant so much to them. And they just decided they were gonna make it happen no matter what. They were gonna go to Miami and be there. I also got to meet a, a red coder, uh, which I didn't even know what that was before this, this season. A guy that had been around for a long, long time and been part of the Red Coats organization uh, and had tons of memorabilia. That felt very, um, you know, there was, there was a lot made about it being the anniversary of the, of the team being here and that kind of thing, and it, it just felt perfect time-wise. Following the mayor around. Mayor of Kansas City, you know, born and raised in Kansas City, lifelong Chiefs fan, and he told me the days of Elvis Gerbach, of all these other quarterbacks past, led up to this moment, and it's kind of, kind of like the losses help mold you for the success, and I feel as if Chiefs Kingdom, all those two and 14 years, the Romeo Cornell years, uh, they were trying times. Uh, <laughs> they were very, very trying times, and I feel as if this led up to that moment, that culmination of, wow, it was well worth it. But I think what I love most is hearing the stories of people who wore their dad's jersey because he wasn't here. You know, he passed away, unfortunately. Or getting to watch the story of a, a man fighting cancer who held on until the very end and got to see his team win before he passed away, you know? Um, local businesses, man, getting a little boost, making the cute Mahomes cakes. I think it's all of it. I think it is sports can unify a city, a community, a fan base like nothing else. And so for a moment in time, Everybody wanted the same thing. No more sleeps. Game day has arrived, Mick Schaefer. So I got to the stadium really early at like 3 o'clock in the morning to beat the traffic. So it was uh, waiting around, and then we slowly started to see fans trickle into the parking lot. You couldn't tailgate, but everyone slowly started to congregate near the gates. And really, once the fans started to go in, um, the day flew by. Fast forward to um, the second half, I mean, it was over. It was over. I, I remember going to the restroom and all the fans, all the 49er fans are in there. And it's almost like they had practiced this, like flash mob style. They're all in the men's restroom singing, oh, right? Mocking the Chiefs uh, uh, chant, Arrowhead Chop. Oh, Mahomes is going home. They were all singing it together. I'm like, how'd you guys, like, do you guys rehearse this? What's going on? Are you all, all here together? Then comes Jet Chip Wasp. Mahomes stepping up. He's throwing long downfield for Tyreek Hill. Got it at the 20 yard line. And then spun down there, the first giant chunk of the game on third down at 15. And Mahomes guns it for 44 yards. I am now seeing the replay from NFL Network, that play and the NFL film's description of it at least 20 times I have watched it. And I thought the other day, yesterday, <laughs> when I watched it again, you know, I could watch this another 20 times because it's that special of a play. When it's called the turning point, it truly was the turning point. And then they come down and they score. That was the touchdown to Kelsey. And his celebration there, I thought, was really telling for kind of the attitude and where they were in the game. Mahomes rolls out, finds a wide open Kelsey in the end zone. Kelsey grabs it, spikes it as he's just running back to the sideline. It's like it's back to work, right? There's no there's a choreographed dance or whatever. You can do that now in the NFL. There was none of that. He caught it. He starts barreling toward the sidelines, spikes it, goes, goes to the sideline. Very little celebration. They're happy, but it's like, okay, we got more work to do. It went fast. It went fast because after Kelsey scored the touchdown, 49ers went three and out. They fake to Williams. They're going to throw it. Tyreek. Over the shoulder and out of bounds and deep in San 
Francisco territory. Throw right side, caught by Williams at the right pylon. Touchdown, Kansas City. Andy Reid dials up a brilliant play. Kansas City regains the lead. I don't know if I can put it into words how insane it was to have it turn around and turn around so quickly, especially when you talk about the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter of the Super Bowl is not supposed to the tide isn't supposed to change like that or turn that quickly. You never count Kansas City out. You never count the Chiefs out. You never count Patrick Mahomes out. Three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Are you kidding me? It was insane, but it was so, so fun to watch them come back like that. Guys on the sideline behind the bench, they were going crazy. They, they, they really were. It was, it was a sight to see. The game is over! And the Chiefs kingdom has firmly planted its flag on top of football's highest summit. The Kansas City Chiefs are champions of Super Bowl 54. That breaking news, Kansas City, is your Chiefs just won Super Bowl 54, 31-20 over the San Francisco 49ers, a victory 50 years in the making. That moment of watching thousands and thousands and thousands of people all together celebrating something special and showcasing Kansas City as a community uh, at that moment was special. Just watching those moments and then going back to Power and Light, I could have spent an hour just watching people at Power and Light. This crowd never gave up. How do you feel, Super Bowl champ? It's just a giant party right now. I had trouble seeing at one point because there is champagne in my eyes. Think of the biggest party you've ever been to and like multiply that by 10. That's what Power and Light District is like. Right now, the scene, the news out here is the fact that everyone who was at their own watch parties outside of Power and Light, they're now trying to make it into the heart of downtown Kansas City to try and get in on the action. How all the streets were blocked off and how no one could basically move and how people were just getting out of their cars and celebrating right Right then and there in the streets, and how it, the like no one, no one was ready to go to bed. It's really hard still to try to describe what it was like. First thing I wanted to do was call my dad and my papa and my mom and be like, "What? Can you guys believe this?" You know. Um, now my 18-month-old can see the arrowhead symbol and say "Chiefs." So it's like one of the first words she learned because this season everybody was screaming "Chiefs" constantly. I mean it. What a ride. What a ride we all get to share now and talk about for decades to come for our kids, for the next time they go back. I loved looking at the players run up to their families. Uh, we saw some players with some kids throwing confetti into the air and making uh, snowmen angels with the confetti, and I thought that was amazing. So I'm over there waiting to ask Dustin Colquitt, which um, little did we know at the time, that was his last game as a chief. And so I'm waiting to see if I can get him over there. But there he is with him and his family and all his kids, he has five kids. They're all doing snow angels in the confetti on the field. I'm like, ah, oh, that's what it's all about. There's a guy who's been in Kansas City longer than any chief. He's a true Kansas Cityan. He's embraced this community. He's had, you know, countless charitable acts. Um, he, he and his wife are so uh, giving. He's such a humanitarian. And by the way, he's awesome on the field. One of the best punters uh, in NFL history. And so for him, a guy who's been there through the two and 14 seasons, through the Todd Haley era, through a lot of bad, for him to finally see that success. I think for everyone in Kansas City, it was how could you not be happy for Big Red? Dia, me, and Gary all cried. <laughs> it was hard not to. There were so many emotions going into this. Uh, it, it, just to see it finally happen, his, his place in the Hall of Fame, to be secured. But I, I felt very much a, gosh, that guy deserves that moment more than maybe any other sports thing. Like it, honestly, the thing I compare it to is maybe like Elway when he won his first championship. And I shouldn't talk about the Broncos, I know. But when Elway won that first Super Bowl before he retired, it felt kind of close to like that. Like that's a, that's a great, great figure in the NFL history that doesn't have one yet. 
and deserves one. You were seeing uh, a guy's legacy change, right? You were seeing the back of his baseball card uh, be erased because leading up to that, he was the guy that couldn't win the big game. He had been to one Super Bowl before and lost it and missed out on so many championship games. He had quote unquote the DNA, he just couldn't do it, which is, which is all bunk. It's not true. Everybody can't win the big game until they do. And so for him to win it with so many years left of Mahomes and him together, you saw a legacy change to where like, all right, he's already a top 10 uh, guy when it comes to winning coaches in the NFL. How high can he get? You know, not only with wins, but with rings as well. You look at some NFL coaches and they try to taper off their players, their, 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 their attitudes, their moods, uh, uh, their, 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 their characteristics. Red, Big Red lets them be who they are. And I feel as if uh, him letting them be who they are is kind of what helped them, you know, win Super Bowl 54. And in a pretty relatively short amount of time, you've seen your entire franchise and its legacy turn around. And so when they win, I just feel this overwhelming sense of joy for this city. And I can only imagine what it was like for them. I mean, I was at the AFC game and you can, you can feel the energy of people coming out. People are crying, people are hugging, people who don't know each other, interacting like family, you know? And I think watching that was such a privilege because to your point, it does unify the city. There were cars lined up all the way down Main Street for hours. People hanging out the windows, swirling the 50th anniversary, 60th anniversary rally towels. It was a huge party in the city. Police officers dancing on the sidewalk. The people are excited because everybody loves the Chiefs. Everybody wants to see the team do well. Everybody wants to see Kansas City at its best. And I think that was the part that was fun. And a million of our closest friends expected today, <laughs> and you can tell already that that will not be hard to do. Welcome back to a day Kansas City will remember for decades to come. I got out there at 4 o'clock in the morning, a little bit before 4 o'clock in the morning. We are so excited. Look at these fans over here. Look at the excitement. <laughs> On parade day, it was just a, a crazy, crazy moment. It was cold. There were a few snowflakes coming down. Maybe it'll just be flurries and add some confetti. We have some nice snowfall confetti coming out of here. And people were there. And that was, that meant a lot to me that, yes, streets are already closed off. I'm used to being up at that time of morning, but these people aren't. And the people that were walking by, plus it was so ridiculously cold at four o'clock that morning. Somebody got here at 8 p.m. last night. Can you believe it? And while all that was going on, people were bundling up in sleeping bags. You name it, they were doing it. And it was just a great moment for all of us to share together. We have an atmosphere in Kansas City that I believe is unmatched by anywhere else in the world. Okay, we have a camaraderie here. Oh, what a time to be alive, folks. We are live at Union Station for the Chiefs Kingdom Champion Look at Chiefs Kingdom out in full Check force. Check out the vantage points we are bringing you. We have 13 live locations up and down the parade route. I loved watching how the team interacted with the crowd. They you could just tell this is a mutual love the chiefs in kansas city and how much this team and how much these fans are just enamored with the amazing gift they gave this town of winning the super bowl i don't know if the honey badger really knows what he did because gary lezak is the biggest chiefs fan that i know i mean bar none and I said, well, Gary, what did you say? He said, I just told him I loved him. I just told him I loved him, and I was so excited. I was so happy, and congratulations. I said, what did he say? He was like, I think he said thank you. <laughs> Tyron comes out. He's, I see him approaching us, and he's on the ground waving at everyone. He's such a genuine guy. And I'd seen him at an event and done an event with him just a, a few months earlier and a few weeks earlier. And when I saw him, I looked over at him, and I just, I just looked at him and he just came over to me and opened up his arms and we embraced, we hugged. I said, congratulations. He said, thank you, man. And it was, it was just a special moment. I mean, I'll never forget that. But I think that that was such a beautiful moment because Gary was giving the team, giving Tyron the hug that the whole kingdom wants to, to say thank you.
Thank you for what you did for this community. The Chiefs Kingdom has firmly planted its flag on top of football's highest summit. It's been a long time coming, because what did we do? We had to fight for our right to party! This season, the adversity we deal with, <laughs> With the injuries, I mean, my knee was in the side of my leg, but we still went back and we won the Super Bowl. We the champs, baby. Next year, we're coming right back here. One more time, baby. One more time. But then our coverage on 41 was just, uh, we, we just hit it out of the park. I mean, well, we had 13 different locations. We were inside the barriers. We brought everybody close. We had, you know, chopper footage. We had ground footage. We had us at the stage. We had Taylor and Lindsay kind of halfway through calling play by play as well. Um, it was really cool. It's a great moment to just kind of. It was so long. You you, you had you had time to um, encapsulate the whole season and talk about every little thing that uh, that happened along the way, whether it's a playoff game or it's a regular season game, whether it's off the field stuff. It was uh, it was very cool. Going through really the story of the the Chiefs, the story of the team, the story of the season, the story of the franchise, really, and it just brought back what a journey that it had been for this team and for this community to get to this point. How many times the Chiefs have been on the cusp, the cusp, and just couldn't cross the finish line. And to think that this curly haired, young 20 something quarterback comes into town and in a matter of a couple of years has given the city something to hope and dream for. He's a guy that can put Kansas City on the map, right? Nobody cared about Indianapolis before uh, Peyton Manning was there. Nobody cared about Cleveland before LeBron James was there. They did when they were playing, that, that's for sure. And he, if he can open up the door to this community and all the other stuff going on here besides sports. It was one of those moments where you had to be there because no doubt the people who were there are going to tell their kids and their grandkids and their great grandkids about that moment. That moment was once in a 50 year moment. It was a moment that some of them never thought they would ever see. Uh, some of them, you know, may never see again in their lifetime.